this is Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. Thank you for joining us on this Wednesday, February 26, 2014. Here are the top 10 news stories that you need to know about right now. First today, according to CBSDC, a coalition of African American civil rights leaders and pastors announced a campaign to gather 1 million signatures to impeach Attorney General Eric Holder for attempting to undermine states' authority to coerce states to fall in line with same-sex marriage. Speaking at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C. on Tuesday, the Coalition of African American Pastors is calling for Holder's impeachment for attempting to impose same-sex marriage throughout the nation despite federal law, rulings by the U.S. Supreme Court, and state constitutional amendments to the contrary, according to the online petition. The Rev. Bill Owens, founder and president of the Coalition of African American Pastors, said what we have in Attorney General Holder is a man so political in his zeal to redefine marriage that he is willing to run roughshod over the rulings of the Supreme Court, binging federal law and the United States Constitution along, along with the constitutions of a majority of states. This comes as Holder announced on Tuesday that state attorney generals are not obligated to defend laws in their states that ban same-sex marriage if they do not believe in such legislation. The CAAP's petition calling for Holder's impeachment says that Holder's position on the matter is in opposition to the values of the black community and similarly faults President Barack Obama for his support of same-sex marriage. Second today, according to the Associated Press, Jackson, Mississippi Mayor Hakwi Lumumba, a prominent lawyer and human rights activist who persuaded voters to accept a sales tax to fix crumbling roads and dated water and sewer systems, died on Tuesday, according to authorities. He was 66 years old. City officials said Lumumba died at St. Dominic Hospital, A cause of death was not immediately clear, though the city council president, Charles Tillman, who was sworn in as acting mayor, said he met Monday with Mr. Lumumba, who had a cold. Lumumba served one term on the city council and was sworn in as mayor last July. He was one of two candidates who defeated then-Mayor Harvey Johnson, Jr. in the Democratic primary in early June. He defeated Jonathan Lee, a businessman, in the general election. State law says the council will set a special election for voters to choose a new mayor. Third today, according to Charisma News, Pastor Rick and Kay Warren of Saddleback Church, the Most Reverend Kevin Van, Bishop of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Orange County, and the National Alliance on Mental Illness of Orange County are joining together to host the gathering on mental health and the church on March 28th at Saddleback Church in Southern California. Open to everyone, the gathering is designed to encourage individuals living with mental illness, educate family members, and equip church leaders to provide effective and compassionate care to anyone who faces the challenges of mental illness. Kay Warren says it's so important that people know, no matter how desperate their despair, that there is hope and not to give up. We want this to be a hopeful event that encourages individuals and helps them realize they are not alone in dealing with mental illness. This event marks the first initiative in the Warrens' mission to remove the stigma of mental illness following the April 5th passing of their son Matthew, who struggled with mental illness. According to the National Institutes of Health, one in four adults, approximately 61.5 million Americans, experiences mental illness in a given year. One in 17, about 13.6 million, live with a serious mental illness, such as schizophrenia, major depression, or bipolar disorder. Fourth today, according to the Greenville Online, Bob Jones University on Tuesday announced that Grace would be reinstated to complete the year-long independent review of the university's response to sexual and other abuse. Marshall Franklin, Executive Vice President of Operations for the University, said officials met with Grace last week to express the concerns that led to the suspension of the project on January 27th. After much discussion and prayer and after considering alternative options, we made the decision yesterday to re-engage Grace to complete the project, Franklin told BJU students and staff. Franklin said it was the university's concern for former students that led to the reinstatement. 
He said, you participated courageously, you shared your very personal and painful experiences, and we surprised you with the announcement. For that, we apologize. Grace, a sexual abuse ombudsman group, later released a statement that said its original contract with the university had been reinstated. Fifth today, according to Christianity Today, Alexandra Turnov, a well-known Baptist pastor and top opposition politician in Ukraine, took office on Sunday, February 23rd, as acting president after the parliament voted to oust President Yakonovich. The collapse of the Yakonovich regime follows three months of growing protests that exploded in last week's violence, which claimed more than 88 lives. Many of these protests took place in the Maidan or Independence Square in the capital city of Kiev. At issue was Yakonovich's decision to move Ukraine into a much closer economic and political relationship with Russia. This move triggered outrage among younger Ukrainians who wished for their nation to cast its lot with the European Union. After the vote to oust him, Yakonovich fled Kiev and is reportedly in Crimea an autonomous republic in southeast Ukraine. According to media reports, the new government has charged Yukonovich with murder and has issued a warrant for his arrest. Six today, according to Reuters, President Barack Obama has told the Pentagon to prepare for the possibility that no U.S. troops will be left in Afghanistan over President Hamid Karzai's refusal to sign a joint security agreement. The United States has said that after its formal drawdown of troops from Afghanistan by year's end, it could leave a contingent of as many as 8,000 for counterterrorism operations against al-Qaeda targets and to train Afghan forces. But Mr. Karzai's refusal to sign a security deal has frustrated the White House, which has been forced to abandon an earlier demand that he sign the deal in weeks, not months. Obama told Karzai in a phone call yesterday that he had given the order to the Pentagon, according to the White House. Obama's phone call to Mr. Karzai was the first substantive discussion between the two leaders since June. Seven today, according to the BBC, Uganda's health minister says homosexuals will not be discriminated against when accessing health care despite the introduction of a tough new anti-gay law. Dr. Ruhakana Ruganda told the BBC that all people, gay or otherwise, should get full access to medical treatment. Aid charities warned the new bill will have disastrous effects on the country's response to HIV. Uganda is a very conservative society where many people oppose homosexuality. Homosexual acts were already illegal in Uganda, but the new law bans the promotion of homosexuality and covers lesbians for the first time. Western governments have condemned President Yoweri Museveni's decision to approve the bill, which gives life sentences for gay sex and for same-sex marriage. Eighth today, according to Fox News, the Iraq government on Tuesday denied reports that it has signed contracts to buy weapons, ammunition, or other military equipment from Iran, but the White House nevertheless pressed for answers at the highest level. Iraq's Ministry of Defense said numerous international firms, including Iran's Defense Industries Organization, recently submitted offers to provide Iraq with military hardware. However, it said the proposal from Iran was rejected. The Defense Ministry said in a statement, based on the need of our armed forces for some ammunition, for light weapons, and night vision equipment to fill the shortage of some of our military units, Offers were submitted for several international firms. In addition to the Iranian Defense Industries Organization, which submitted their bids and delivery schedules, preference was given to other companies and no contract was signed with the Iranian company. Nine today, according to Reuters, Hezbollah will respond to an Israeli airstrike that hit one of its bases on the border with Syria on Monday night, the Lebanese militant group said on Wednesday. The new aggression is a blatant assault on Lebanon and its sovereignty and its territory. The resistance Hezbollah will choose the time and place and the proper way to respond, Hezbollah said in a statement. The strike which Israel has not confirmed hit the Lebanese-Syrian border near the Bekaa Valley village of Janta. It denied reports that the strike targeted artillery or rocket bases and said there were no casualties. Lebanese security forces have said they believe that any attack took place on Syrian soil, 
but Hezbollah's reference to Lebanese sovereignty suggested it took place on the Lebanese side of the ill-defined frontier. Tenth and finally today, according to Reuters, President Barack Obama said on Tuesday that some four million people had signed up for health insurance through exchanges provided by his signature health care law known as Obamacare. Obama made the comments to cheers from supporters during an appearance at a national organizing summit put together by the political organization Organizing for Action that was formed out of his 2012 campaign apparatus. He urged supporters to keep reaching out to people to get them signed up for health insurance coverage. That's today's top 10 news stories. You can read these stories and more at urbanchristiannewsnetwork.com. As you go throughout this day, keep this word in mind. 1 John 4, 9 says, In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. God loves you, he always has, and he always will. He loves you so much that the Bible says in John 3:16, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, why don't you get to know him today? Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose by the power of God for you. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today, and he will. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. May God bless your day.